what if you could build an impactful online mini course in just a week? Well, in this episode, I'll show you how to create a must-have mini course so you can create customers that later become coaching and consulting clients. Now, without a back-end offer, this seven-day mini course creation strategy will require like a lot of sales to build a sustainable business. So I want to give you my signature system creation doc. I use this document to help my clients build out their coaching or consulting programs from start to finish. So if you want it, drop the word system in the comments down below and I'll get it to you. For those of you who don't know, my name is Fortune. I'm the author of three books and a self-publishing strategist for established coaches and consultants who want to write a book and use that book to grow their business. I've created a proprietary method of getting your book out of your head in less than four hours using a phone and a few websites. And this show teaches you how to do that and build a sales funnel to turn your book readers into clients and customers. Now today, I'm going to show you how to create a must-have course so you can create customers that later become clients. And I have three reasons why I want I create mini courses. Number one, I do it when I'm tired of repeating myself <laughs> because I... I just don't like repeating myself. So what I'll end up doing is if I've said something to multiple clients over and over, or I've got the same question like in chats or DMs, I will just go ahead and create a video or I will create a course. If I think it's a, it needs to be deeper or some more valuable conversation than just creating a video like we're doing it today, I will go in depth into that topic and create a mini course. So that's number one. So I don't have to keep repeating myself and I can actually get paid for something obviously people find valuable. Number two, I can create it once and I know I can sell it multiple times, like 10 times, a hundred times, a thousand times. So think about that. Instead of me having to go out and find the next customer, find the next customer, find the next customer for my back-end coaching or my consulting services, if I can figure out how to sell just that one course, then I can then sell that course multiple times. So it actually saves me energy and it also can become something that becomes a and what's called an evergreen product, which means it's selling constantly without my effort. That's another reason why I want to use a mini course because I don't have to keep doing the work. Do it once, sell it multiple times. The third reason that, that why I like to use mini course is that because it a, solves one problem, it's going to actually create another problem. What am I saying? Anytime you solve a problem for someone, you've just made an opportunity for another problem to surface. Now, maybe it's a problem that was already there that now is becomes the forefront and the front of their, the conversation that someone needs to have next. Or because you solved that problem, you actually now see the problem behind that problem. Okay, so for example, I like using this example that was given to me several years ago, which is when I buy a car to solve the problem of getting to work or getting around to wherever I want to go, the new problem I have is how to maintain the car and also how to put gas in the car, how to keep the oil in the car, um, how to drive the car, right? These are all th new problems that happen as a result of solving the problem of transportation. So when I solve the problem of helping my authors to, or want to be authors, to create their outline for the book, now the next problem they have is how do I actually create the content? When I help them solve the problem of creating the content through a mini course, now they need to know how do I sell the book. If they have solved the problem of selling the book, now they want to know, well, how do I turn this book into other clients and uh, for my coaching and my consulting? 
which is what you continue to CBD. See, all these mini courses, which I have mini courses for all of those problems I just talked about, all lead up to the bigger course of how do you create the entire process with my help. See, now through the mini courses that I sell, they are another problem, which might be implementation. How do I do this? I need some accountability. Can you help me do this? Can I ask for your suggestions and feedback on this, what I create, what are the problem that I'm trying to solve through the mini course? These are the other problems that might happen as a result of giving someone uh, a mini course and solving that simple problem. Okay? These are the reasons why I create mini courses. Now, the, one of the, another problem that comes up, there are, there are several problems that can come up with, uh, with creating a course because many course creators jump into this process of building a course without doing enough homework up front. They just have this idea that they want to help someone with and they think the market wants it, but they haven't decided, they haven't determined whether the market really wants that product. And we don't want to do that. And I have created courses that didn't sell. It wasn't that they weren't fantastic courses. At least I thought they were. It was that the market didn't want them. So I don't do that anymore. I create courses that people already tell me that they want. And there's a few ways that you can do this. Number one way is to turn your lead magnets into lead products. What that means is if you have created several lead, mag lead magnets, and a lead magnet is something that you're giving away for free for someone to come into your world. So now you can start selling them your mini courses, selling them your coaching, selling them your, cons your coaching products, or what other other courses, courses that you may have to offer, services that you may have to offer, products that you may have to offer, you give them something up front to bring them into the world so now you can sell them other products for profit, okay? If you have multiple lead magnets out there and you find that one of them just continues to kill it, like it's selling, it's selling more than the other products that you offer for free, then you might wanna take that product and shift it into a lead product or a small mini course, especially if you are a coach or a consultant. You may want to shift that into a mini pro a mini course or a lead product. Okay. Number two, if you uh, if you really want to sell a bunch, I'm gonna get clever with my words here. If you want to sell a bunch, trust. Pre-sales over a hunch. And here's what I mean. You can sell, and I suggest you pre-selling your mini course before you actually create the course. Basically, what you're doing is testing the market. And I don't mean testing the market by asking your group or asking some of your clients if they would like a course. Okay? Just asking them if they like a course, and they will say, yeah, that would be awesome if you had that. And then you try to you create the course and they don't buy it, you've just wasted your time. What you can do is pre-sell that course up front because now they are showing you and voting with their, as my mentors say, voting with their wallet. They're voting with dollar bills, right? You want to do that up front so that now when you create your mini course, you already have an audience and you're getting paid to create that course. Okay, so that's the number two way to solve that problem of or hedging your bet up front so you don't create this product without having done your research. The third thing to do is to sell a workbook. See, workbooks can be easier to sell because people know they can get a result. The reason why you're giving someone a workbook is it's going to walk them through an entire process to get them a result. People understand and trust a workbook more than they, control, they trust some of the mini courses because people have sold the mini courses that didn't get them a result. If you have a workbook, the people automatically assume that that workbook is going to get them a result. Plus, you can show through uh, through the actual graphics that you're using for that workbook that 
people are going to go through a process. Oh, there's a checklist here. There's an assessment on this page. And you're going to have some fun of the blank on this page. And at the end of that, it's going to, you're going to have this result. They see that. Now you create a mini course to go with that workbook. So you sell the workbook, which now you've been selling at seven to ten dollars, but because you're attaching the mini course to it, you can now sell that for thirty-seven, forty-seven, ninety-seven dollars as a mini course because of the work, uh, excuse me, of course, because of the course that you're adding to that workbook. So if you have a workbook that you know you've been giving away or you've been using in your workshops, you can sell that workbook and give away the course and now increase the value of that. Now, there are many would-be creators, would-be course creators out here who have seen other people out in the marketplace that are talking about passive income. They wanna, they've retired from just one course. And they want that life too. They've, they've seen other people do it and they know they, they have the skills to do it. They have the expertise to do it. But I'm telling you now, do this work up front. Either trick your lead magnet and turn into a mini course if you want to be successful to, or sell the course up front, pre-sell it so that you ha know that you're going to have a chance of having a very successful course or take one of your work, which you've already been using, for the help people help your clients get results and create a workbook or a workshop uh, a course around that workbook. If you don't do that, there's a good chance that you're going to create a course. You're not going to create passive income because no one wants what you're selling them, and you don't want to do that. Please don't waste your time doing that. Now, with that being said, let's let's move into the seven steps in this mini course creation sprint, is what we're going to call it. Um, the, and now the seven steps I'm going to give you, of course, is over seven days. Each of those days, these steps I'm giving you should only take 90 minutes or less to do. You don't need to spend a whole lot of time. We're creating a mini course, not a long 12-week course or anything like that. This is a mini course that could lead to your 12-week course or your other offering, okay? So whatever you do, though, whatever you do from what I'm teaching you here today, only teach enough to get a result and no more. Only teach enough to get a result and no more. That might mean you need to take things out of your of this mini course so people don't get overwhelmed with the content that you're giving them. Just give them one problem, that, or just solve one problem for them through this course. Okay, so now let's go into all seven days that you're gonna take to create this mini course. Now, this is also Assuming that you have done one of those strategies already that we, that we just discussed, whether that's a lead magnet into a lead product or you pre-sold this mini course or you're turning a workbook and attaching a course to it. Okay, we're assuming that you've done that. So now we're going to go through the creation process. You're going to do this in a week. And I'll tell you up front, you're recording this live on day four of this week. Okay, so you don't necessarily have to do a whole bunch of upfront work or maybe you do days one, two, three up front and when it's time for you to actually do this mini course, uh, record this mini course live, you've already done that work. Or you can do it all in one week, okay? But again, it's a total of seven days on a week. Day one, you're gonna outline. Very simply, here's the outline for this mini course. You're gonna talk about, and it may no more than three modules. I wouldn't even say that much. Usually it's like one or two modules for this mini course. But in each module, you got four questions to answer. Why they need to know what you're teaching them in that module, what they need to know in that module, so kind of that mindset and understanding of what they're going, uh, what they're going to do, what you're going to teach them. The third thing is how do they do it? You're going to give them a step-by-step -step instructions on how to accomplish whatever it is you're teaching in that module. And then the fourth piece of the module is now, what do they need to do now? Give them an action step so they can get a result now. Even if you're talking about something like mindset or confidence, you're going to tell them why it's important to have the mindset or to have the, the, the confidence or whatever it is you're teaching, relationships. You're going to teach them, tell them why, and you're going to get, tell them what they're going to learn in that module. Uh, they're going to tell them how to do it and then give them instruction to do right now. 
What actions are they going to take to get that result? Because you want them to come out of the mini course with a result, with that problem solved. Not just giving them information for the sake of giving them information so that their mind is changed. That's called a mini class. That's called a YouTube video. That's called a podcast episode, okay? When you're doing a mini course, they need to get a result as a, as a result of going through your course, okay? That's day one. Create the outline with, with those four pieces in it. Day two, create your slides. Now, I prefer to have slides on the screen because people have different modalities where they take in information. So a simple slide doesn't mean that you have to do a full slide presentation with you just doing a voiceover. It doesn't mean that you're going to do the whole, uh, uh, doing it in front of the camera and you're only going to have your face up in the corner or in a little circle or in a little square on the screen. You can go back and forth after the editing while uh, in the editing phase, which is day number five, we're going to get to that in a second, but you can go back and forth between clicking on the screen where you're recording the screen down here and you're going to have the camera up in front of you. Okay. But you, so my point being have slides so that the different learning modalities can see that and visualize whatever it is that you're teaching. Now with these slides, there are three types of slides, three things you want to remember about these slides. One, you don't need a lot of words. Less words is better. Just have enough for a phrase or the, the big highlight point that you're talking about. You don't need a lot of content on those slides because when you have a lot of content on the slides, people are reading the slides and not paying attention to your teaching. So if you are going to teach through a bunch of words, give them a workbook. <laughs> okay, but you're going through a mini course, they're learning from you and they need to listen to you. So don't have a bunch of slides on there. But also, don't make the slides just plain. Have some type of background in there that helps a person who's a visual learner. Somebody that's more, that likes to learn, that's, that may be not good at reading or someone that's a, a very visual learner, you may want to have metaphors, or excuse me, imagery on the, on the background so that people understand that concept. It doesn't mean you have to be super elaborate and all that. You can find images on a lot of places like Unsplash or Pixa, uh, Pixels, P-E-X-E-L-S. Um, you can go find these images. Again, finding that that are that don't have any privacy rights. Okay, so find images that you're not gonna have to pay for unless you want to pay for them. But find those so that you can use them for your for paid product. Okay, royalty free is the word I'm looking for. <laughs> royalty free images. So use those in the backgrounds if you need. Okay. Or the next thing is demos. Please trust in demos. And a demo could be as simple as you going through a, a writing example of something that you're doing for mindset or confidence, something like that. It might be you demonstrating how to have a conversation through relationships or things of that nature. If you are talking about making money or things of that nature, you might have some type of software that people are filling in the in blanks. And you may want to go through a demonstration of how to fill in the worksheets that are part of your mini course. Day three, you want to create your downloads. You may have some of these downloads already, but if not, create the downloads. And the downloads... These may be the slides or the uh, the slides that you are going to give to your uh, mini course customers. They may be the worksheets that you're using for them to fill out and get the results or to remember and really understand the information that you're teaching through the mini course. And it may be other supporting materials. Now, you can also compile all three of these, the slides, the worksheets, and the supporting documents you may send them to a different a book to look at or a video to look at or some other information to help them understand or can to really consume that or excuse me really understand the information that you're giving them it might be some type of video or something like that so we can combine all those into a workbook which you can then of course sell later <laughs> as another product but right now you can combine those all together or there'll be separate things a slide you do separate a worksheet that can be separate and other sort of supporting information that might uh they might be include uh, for that mini course again these are per module 
day four, you're going to record. Again, we're doing this live. So make sure you have the good mic. Make sure your cadence is such that people can understand you. Don't just drone on like this when you're teaching through your mini course. It's hard to, to, to take that in, okay? Use voice inflection. Use your personality. Put that into your course. And I know it may be kind of difficult to just talk to a camera, and that's the reason why you're doing it live. Because the third thing here in recording is to have energy. I was once told that if you want to be at a seven or an eight in your videos or recordings, you need to come up to present at a 10 or 11 because there's something that's lost in the recording of, of the video and the audio. So you have to be over and above where you want to be so that it actually comes across the way you want to be on the video. So increase your energy so it comes across that you are actually passionate about what you're saying and that passion will come through the camera. Hopefully, that's what's happening in all of my videos as you're watching this now. Day five, you wanna do editing. Three things here for editing. Chop your videos into bite-sized pieces. So even if your videos are about 20 minutes per module, chop it into seven or eight minute sections. Some people break this down into the why portion, the what portion, the how, and the now. You can break it up like that. It could be broken up into just the, the different points that you're making in the module. You can break it up, but just make it up to a logical break in your training, but spike size pieces, seven minutes, 15 minutes uh, are good. Until you get to the longer courses, you may break them up into bigger pieces. But for a mini course, keep it simple, bite size, um, Improve the sound quality that you have. And if you don't know how to edit into bite-sized pieces, if you don't know how to improve the sound in your audio for the, for the mini course, then give it to a professional. You can go to some place like Fiverr, then they get it done very, very quickly for you. You give them all the content, they go ahead and edit it and improve the sound and do all that stuff for you. They might add little flares or whatever. You got to tell them what you want, but you can get that done professionally for a reasonable price if you don't know how to do it yourself. You don't want to look janky on a video, and I've seen some janky videos. Problem is, some of those janky videos still got results, and they got paid because they put up a janky video because they had great quality. Do not not put up your video or mini course because you think you need better quality. It doesn't need to be perfect. It needs to get results, okay? But if you can't do it yourself, get a professional. Day six, you want to upload all your content to some type of LMS, okay? So this is a learning management system, okay? This might be any number of software out there. You can use WordPress and create some actual plugins. You can do Thinkific or any of those types of things, Teachable or any other number, Kajabi might be another one. I personally use a course called, use a program called FG Funnels. It has all of the things that I need for including being able to create websites, create the email sequences, create, uh, take, it's all in one course, all in one builder, okay? I build sales funnels, all of that all in one, including uploading my courses to it. So whatever I need to do, create appointments, and follow up with people in the mini course, put out assessments through the mini course. All of that is all inside of FG Funnels. That is a course that I recommend. I'll put a link down to that below here if you want to check out FG Funnels. All right. So you want to upload all of your content. So that's in, that's your slides. That is your worksheets. And add any of the supporting information that you're going to have, whether that's another PDF or anything else like that, or links to some other places. You want to upload all that information to your, wherever you're going to host this course to. And you also want to do this. You still need to sell your course in the, the words that you're putting inside of your course. Because sometimes you get, I've got many courses that were just like, here, here's the content, but they didn't remind me of what I was learning. There's something about being able to see, oh, in this module, you're going to learn this, that, and the other because of this, that, and the other. And here's some extra, cons uh, here's a reason why you need to learn this. Like that little simple thing helps me get into the content. It helps remind me and gets me in 
motivated to consume the information. Okay, so you still want to sell the course again. It's a way for people to finish your mini course. The other piece is when you have sell when you're when you're uploading this content, make sure everything looks the way that you want it to look before you move on to the next step on day seven. Okay, you want to make sure you open your course as if you are a user like you're a student and click on the stuff, play the videos, click the downloads and make sure everything's working. That's part of the upload stage too, all right? Day seven are the emails. Now, the emails are super important because it increases engagement for your course. Plus, this gives you an opportunity to do follow-up. Remember, the mini course is supposed to be leading to another problem for them to solve, for you to solve. That mini course, the next step might be uh, for them to get on a call with you. The next step might for them to go to your course. The next step might be for them to, to subscribe to your membership program. The next step might be for them to go into your group, whether that's on Facebook or some other type of social platform. You want to make sure your emails are telling them what to do. So you need to have uh, a beginning email. So here's your course login information and what to expect in the course and congratulations and all that. You need to have middle a middle email. So in the middle of the mini course or a day two, the, the day or two afterwards that they purchased the mini course, you wanna make sure, have you started your course? Have you finished your course? What did you think? What did you have any questions? Those types of questions uh, or ideas are gonna go into that second email, your, your middle email. The third, because don't think people are out, just because you may create a simple mini course doesn't mean people are going to watch it all the way through one time, at one time, okay? They might not do it, or if they're trying to take action on whatever you're telling them to do, they need to get respond, uh, reminded to take action and in, encourage to finish the mini course. Now, the last email, so which is the third email here, is for them to, for you to tell them to do the next step. Book that call or to check out the next mini course, or to uh, grab the, the the larger course, or to jump into your coaching or consulting or whatever it may be. That third email sells the next thing. So on day seven, again, this shouldn't take any more than about 90 minutes or less to create these. These are not long emails. We're talking about less than 300 words for each email, okay? So there are there are all seven days of this mini course, uh, course mini course creation sprint. Okay, day one outline, day two slides, day three are the downloads, day four is the record, day five is the edit, day six is to upload all your content, day seven is to create the emails. All right, so that's how you create a a mini course in a week. Again. A warning, make sure you have done the pre-work before you go through all these, all this, all seven days of creating this course. Now, the question I know you may you have at this point is how do you sell the course once you've already created it? And one of the best ways for you to do that, because of course, you know, I help you write your books. So one of the best ways to sell a mini course is to use a book sales phone. That means Sell or give your book away up front and on the next page, the thank you page, you sell your mini course. Now, remember, this is after you've already created. You've pre-sold the course already and then you created it through using the seven-day um, mini course uh, course creation sprint. And now you're making this evergreen. The way to make it evergreen is to sell your book up front or give it away, and on your thank you page for either selling it or giving away, you have this mini course. You already know it works, you know it's already getting results, you have all the other things do to help support people through the emails and all of that, all the content's uploaded, it's already ready. You need to do something with it. Your mini course, your mini course comes after your course in a book sales funnel. But remember, the mini course is, is a splinter offer. And what do I mean by splinter offer? This means that your mini course is a piece of a much larger offer. Because remember, this is leading to something else that is within the realm of what you solve as a coach or consultant. 
So this split, this is a splinter out of the bigger offer. It's a piece of the bigger offer that you're selling right now. But if you don't have a larger back-end offer, I suggest that you at least have that planned out before you create the mini course. Why do I say that? Because then you can sell someone into that larger offer and you know why you have this mini course. Otherwise, you're going to have to sell a whole lot of mini courses to have a sustainable business. Just think about this. If you were trying to have a six-figure business, which is what most people have, it's like the, the buzz, that's $100,000 plus, okay? We're going to start at the low end. $100,000 at a minimum to be a six-figure business. If you're selling your mini course, let's just say on the high end, for a hundred dollars. That means you need to sell a thousand courses every year in order for you to create a hundred thousand dollar business. On the more of for the most part, you're probably going to sell 10 books for every one person that buys your mini course. More than likely, it's going to be like 20 or more people that books that you sell or give away up front that get to one mini course sold. So that's a lot of books to be selling every year. You're talking about now selling, if you got to sell a thousand courses to, to, in order to make a hundred thousand dollar business, then that means you need to sell 10 times. That means you need to sell 10,000 books a year in order to get there. That's a lot of books to be sold. Most people do not know how to do that. However, if you have a 2000, $3,000, $5,000 course or coaching program on the back end, then now you only need to sell 40 or 50 of those back end products out of the 100, 200, 300 courses that you may have to sell, which now means you only need to sell 1,000, 2,000 uh, books in order to hit your numbers. Have a larger back end product to make up. Or get really good at marketing. <laughs> All right, so here's the thing. If you do not have that back-end product, I want to help you out with that, as I said in the beginning of this of this show. Because uh, this is what I want to give you is my signature system creation doc. And this doc is something I help my clients create their transformational coaching and consulting uh, services using this document. It's going to break down... Your coaching and consulting services into steps, into problems, uh, into solutions that you're offering, the benefits of each of those steps, the milestones for each of those steps, and the resources that you need to help them get those results. So basically, you're creating the whole program using this document. So once you fill all this stuff in, you are able to sell your coaching or consulting services so easy. It's going to be easy not easy as walking someone through a no fuss pleasing sales call something I talked about in a previous video <laughs> so if you want that this document the signature system creation document all I've asked you to do is drop the word system down below in the comments and I'll make sure I get it to you that being said y'all you can be you can do you can have anything you want in this world you just gotta believe you can live a life of no doubt, just blessings. I will show you how. And just remember, you're only one book away from the next breakthrough in your life or in your business. So go out there and make life happen every day. God bless, and I'll talk to you next time.